Hello and welcome to this first tutorial for an expansion to a game. This is Secrets and Soirees, which can be added to the base game of Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig. If you're not familiar with that game, I have a link in the description that will lead you to my explanation of it. In this video I won't go into how to play the game, but what the expansion adds to it. As you may have seen in the setup video, all the tiles from the original base game have been mixed up with the new tiles from the Secrets and Soirees expansion. And next to the yellow tray there are these ballroom tiles which should be kept face down. The new scoring pad comes in at the end of the game. You play the game with the expansion exactly the same way as the base game. Every player takes 9 tiles in the first round and 9 tiles in the second round. Each turn you choose 2 of those tiles to keep and pass the rest to the player next to you. The only difference is that there are some room types. I'll explain those first. You now have activity rooms. They look like this. They're all in this color and they show this loot icon. All of them score you one point for each tile that it touches. That can give you a maximum of four points per activity room. But there's a catch. If somewhere around the tile, so even diagonally, there happens to be a room of the type that is indicated on the activity room, then you only get one point. Each activity room shows you a type of room it doesn't want to be near to. So either one point, point per tile it touches, or simply one point in total if somewhere around it there's a room it doesn't like. That's how activity rooms work. You can place them on ground level or above ground. You can't place them below ground. Next you have secret rooms. They all have this arrow icon and this dark teal color. As you see, you can also see an arrow on the bottom where it normally shows how a tile works. So you might already guess how this tile gives you points. This tile copies the tile that it's next to, the room where the arrow is pointing to. It's cloning the other tile. You can place this tile everywhere. It can go on every level even if the room that it copies can't be. The only thing it doesn't repeat is the blue border that normally indicates that it's an outside space. The secret rooms are always inside. When you place a secret room you can place one of these tokens on it to indicate which type of room it is. As you know from the base game, as soon as you have three of five tiles, uh, three or five tiles of the same room type, you get a bonus. This secret room copies another room, so this one counts as one of that type of room. There is no bonus for having three or five secret rooms, because it becomes another room as soon as you place it. The activity rooms, however, do have their own bonus. As soon as you have placed three activity rooms in a castle, you can take a ballroom. Those are in this stack by the yellow tray. You take three of those tiles, you choose one to keep and place, and the other two go out of the game. The ballrooms also go on ground level or above ground, just like the activity rooms. So what do ballrooms do? This icon on the tile will help you remember. It's a castle in the middle, pointing to the castles next to it. Each ballroom gets one point 
For each room of a particular type that is on the castle to the left and the right. That could be a lot of points and there is no limit to how many you can have. This ballroom shows this icon. That means it gets one point for each of this room type that's in the castle to the left and to the right. And the last thing to explain is one small change in the rules of the base game. If you know it, you're familiar with how to get points for sleeping rooms. You have to have six other types of rooms in your castle, and then you get four points for the sleeping room. That is still the same, but now activity rooms also count as one of the six types you need to get to get the full points. Even though sleeping rooms don't show the color of an activity room on them, they do count. And that's it! These are the new additions to the game. There are also new cards, but if it isn't clear what it does when you draw it, the rulebook has a helpful overview of all new bonus cards. I hope you feel you fully understand what this expansion has to offer. It also comes with rules for playing this with only two players or solo. If there isn't any information on that now, I'm sure there soon will be. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.